the next step is going to SQL Server database as our connector for Power BI desktop. So I'm going to, uh, you know, open my Power BI desktop. So before we move on to SQL Server database, let us open SQL Server database. So this is SQL Server database in my machine. Uh, basically, I'm using SQL Server Management Studio, right? It is one of the you know, standard uh, databases and Management Studio is one of the application to access the tables and other data within the SQL Server, okay? So again, for people who have not installed this, I'm going to share a video so that you can see how to install SQL Server on your machines, okay? Because I already installed earlier, uh, I'm just continuing with that. So I'll be sharing a video which uh, I have recorded during my installation process. All right. So you can just follow along. So basically, uh, this is a pop up that comes up to sign in. So I'm just clicking on sign in because there are already default entries which are already available. So let me just explain you. So this is the area where we can see our databases. Okay. So we have a uh, many databases here. Uh, let me just quickly open up one database called AdventureWorks 2022. Okay. Okay. I want to open something related to fact table, which gives me more, you know, options to look into the data. Okay. So uh, there's a table called fact internet sales. Okay. Where you have a lot of uh, data, like, you know, which it has a lot of keys. And also as we go further, you can see sale, sale order number. And also you see what is the unit price, extended amount, discount amount. We have so much information here and you can see all that a query is also coming in directly select top thousand and all the column names from so-and-so table name right so this is the data that we wanted to connect from our power bi desktop okay so what i should do is i should go back to my power bi desktop okay click on get data click on more and i can search for sql server as you can see, there are uh, SQL Server database. This is what we are planning to connect. So I can select that and click on connect. Okay. So once I select that connect option, I need to enter a server name. So basically the expectation is you need to have a server name handy and database name is optional, but definitely your client or anywhere you are planning to connect, they will provide you the server name. They will provide you the database name. They will provide you the credentials, the login ID and password. Okay. So right now we oh, we can get the server name from here. Okay. So basically the server name is, uh, we can get by going to this option properties. So basically the server name is nothing but metaverse. You can see here the server is called metaverse. Okay. So let me just enter the name called metaverse. And the database name is optional although, but I would prefer to enter. So this is the database, right? I can go to properties again. I can select this database and there are the properties that is basically giving you the name of the database. You can see database name. This is the name of the database. You can just copy the database name and I can paste it here. Okay. So now the data connectivity mode. So we are going to discuss more into this a bit later, but right now imagine that there are two data connectivity mode options. One is import. The other one is direct query. So in the first, uh, you know, demonstration, I'm going with import. Okay. So let's select import and click on OK. So now we are connecting it for the first time. It is asking you to enter the credentials. Okay. So the very first option that you see here is Windows. So whenever you install SQL Server and uh, your administrator has config configured the SQL login along with your laptop login, which is Windows. So in that case, we can use directly Windows and use my current credentials and I can click on connect. But this is not the case in my system. While installing the SQL Server, I've chosen to have a separate ID and password for logging into SQL Server. As you might have noticed while I opened SQL Server, I just clicked on a pop-up. I mean, there was a pop-up with pre-filled ID and password. That was a different ID and password. Okay. So that is uh, basically a database ID and password. So why, why you won't choose Microsoft account? Because this is not a uh, online or this is not an online service, right? Basically this is not a cloud-based service because it's a standalone installation that we have done on my machine, right? SQL Server database is a standalone installation, just like a Power BI desktop that you are installed in your machines. 
So SQL Server database is like a standalone that will be installed on different machines or servers, right? So basically, it, since it's a uh, standalone, we cannot sign in, right? So we should go with some login ID and password. So this is the database login ID and password that we need to enter. So here uh, the login ID that I have used is SA. So majorly SA is a standard admin password. Usually, you know, while installing the SQL Server, you'll get that default admin password. I've kept it the same thing. And I'm going to enter the password, okay, which I've uh, given while, you know, for the SQL Server. And I can click on connect. Okay. So you can see there's a normal warning that you usually get. So we were unable to connect to the data source using an encrypted connection. It says I'm unable to connect using an encrypted connection. However, to access this data source using an unencrypted connection, you should be okay. Click on okay. That is fine. This is just a warning. You can click on okay. And as you can see, once it connects, it is able to get all the tables from that particular dat database, right? You might have noticed, right? There are all the tables. And specifically, I was more interested in connecting to uh, fact internet sales, if you remember, right? So I can just select like any other uh, table that you we used to select, right? When we connected to O data, when we connected to Excel, right? We have option to select these. I'm going to select that one particular table and click on transform data. And the data is now part of your Power BI desktop. So this is how we get the data from SQL Server database. Okay, this time we are again connecting uh, to SQL Server DB using direct query method. So I'm going to enter server name and the database is Adventure of TW 2022. And this time I'm going to select direct query. So I want you to observe what happens here. So let me select the same table to make it similar. Click on transform data. Now click on close and apply. So far you might not have seen any difference, but you'll be seeing a difference now once the data is loaded. So if you closely observe what happened now, on the left side, on the left side, there, you, there will be usually three tabs. I mean, one is report view, which is the canvas view that we are right now working on. The second one is a table view. It, was, it should be a table view, but it is gone now. And then we have a model view which is showing you the table. So usually the table view, which was in between these two was allowing us to look at the data. When you click on the table view, we were able to look at the data in this particular table. The problem now is because we are connecting via direct query, we cannot see the data here in our Power Query Editor. Oh, sorry, Power BI Desktop. Why? Because this direct query means it is directly connecting to the database. That means it is not getting the data to your Power BI Desktop. Okay, so again, this is kind of an interview question people uh, you know might ask most of the time. So in the direct query, what is happening? It is directly kind of establishing connection to the SQL Server database in real time. Okay, it's just like it is directly connected to SQL Server, whereas in all other cases, in all the examples that we have seen so far, either from Excel, CSV, SharePoint, O Data, whatever examples that we have seen so far, in all of these cases, by default, it was import method. Right? There was no second option there. Since it is a database, which is more powerful than all other data, you know, data sources, it has got additional option that is a direct query. In this additional option, we don't see data here coming and sitting on top of Power BI Desktop. Rather, it will be still sitting on the SQL Server. However, in real time, the query is being pushed from Power BI Desktop to SQL Server database. Okay, so we can also cross check that like, you know, there is an option to cross check that. So let's say I'm adding a graph here just to make sure I'll show you what is happening. Okay, let's say if I'm pulling something, let's say I'm pulling a sale amount and also I'm pulling something which is maybe ship date. Okay, maybe I'll make it a table rather instead of a visual. Okay, so you can see we got a table here. So this is basically, you don't have data on your Power BI desktop. So how do you think the data is coming here? It is having a direct establishment of the query and it has run a query in real time to the database and bought the data and showing up here. So if there is a method to check that uh, from the SQL Server database perspective. 
So usually there is some tool called uh, SQL Profiler. Okay. I think uh, it is installed or not. Let me just check profile. Okay, there's a SQL Profiler. Okay, let me just open that. So SQL Profiler is again a SQL, it's a database tool where usually all these admins, like database admins would use this majorly. So what it does is it checks what what all queries are being hit to the database. Connect again, we need to just click on the connect option and you will be able to log in. So click on connect and you should be able to click on run. So this will generate an instance that will basically as an administrator. So this is all not required for you all. Even, you know, you will not be able to use this in real time. But just for your understanding, I'm just adding this option so that people who wanted to go to the external layer and try to understand what is up happening behind the scenes, they can use this. Okay. So now let us again, you know, uh, remove this and drag it again. Okay. Let me just add uh, tax amount now. Maybe I will add order date now. So what I've added, order date and tax amount. So to look at this thing, these new queries have just popped in. Okay. These queries were not there a while ago. If you can also notice the timestamp there. You can see there's a 2130. It's a timestamp right now. This is the exact time that is here and uh, the date. It is showing you the key. You can see, you can select that query and also see what was the query. You can see the select order date, tax amount from so and so. So it is in real time passing the query from Power BI Desktop to SQL Server. Okay. This is what is direct query. This direct query is kind of, uh, you know, very important when people wants the data with no delay. Like they, some for some reason, they wanted to look at the data without any delay. As soon as there is a data on the database, they wanted to look at the data in the visual, right? So that is when we use direct query here. Okay. So, and also it is also used when there is a large set of data because import method will have some limitation of 1 GB of data. So there is uh, too much of data. Uh, your Power BI desktop will also get a bit slower. Okay. Again, in the premium licensing cases, again, the capacity is a bit more. The size is increased a bit more. But still, when there is a huge data, we go, especially data is coming from databases, there is a flexibility and option to use a direct query option and people would use direct query option. So this is all about connecting to SQL Server via direct query method.